Hey guys, welcome to The Secret History. Living in your aquarium tubs, tanks, or buckets. So, here we have an oxillus plant that is flowering again at the end of uh, summer, which is interesting. Another side note that's interesting about this is that the blooms only open at night, or the end of the day, kind of. So these look like little, uh, I think they have like seven petals, five or seven. Uh, the yellow blooms on them and they open up at night. In any case, uh, put this, this is all growing still in shallow water and the water is run out up, up this lava rock bag. It's a filter media bag filled with lava rock, but the plants are all growing up the sides, um, including the uh, Azola, but also the creeping uh, Jenny, creeping Charlie, and uh, some Ludwigia are in there. Um, and then in here, we've got the lovely Palestris maculatus uh, growing up, as well as another native plant, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. But today, what are we doing? Why are we looking at these things? Well, we are going to be going in and taking out the babies. Now, as far as the Midaka rice fish go, uh, these guys are probably okay. We can probably leave most of the fry in here and, and most of the adults, they'll be fine. They're good all the way down to around freezing. We need to add a little water to this because a lot's evaporated, but that's allowed them with all the uh, hornwort and other stuff floating in here plant-wise. That's given the babies a lot of room to uh, graze on algae and little insects and things without getting eaten. Uh, but let's go check on the other tubs and see how things are doing. So, this is turning out to be a really weird year. I had all sorts of baby fish in fry keepers on the side of the tank over here, and unfortunately, a cat or raccoon came, finally. After all summer, no problems, boom, one came and it knocked a, a cr critter carrier off that one, out right this one off here, and also tipped over a few little containers that just had rice fish fry in them and also the uh, albino paradise uh, fish uh, kissing fish whatever you want to call them but in here we have the guppies and the there, there, there's guppies uh, that are a strain that's been outside all year long in a deep insulated pond at a friend's place for three seasons. And then we also have, um, you can see the Ludwigia palustris right over there too. And also some Persicaria uh, is also sunken in here. But we had the temperature dip down to 50 degrees and uh, maybe even 48, 49 degrees. I don't think that the fish can take much more of that. Even these red root floaters and things kind of tend to fall apart when the weather's swinging like that. Uh, it's unfortunate because we're just at the beginning of September, and usually in in this region we get you know a whole lot more time out of tubbing. We usually get into early October um, pretty safely. Uh, the rosy barbs over here, they're still doing pretty good. They're active and colorful. Let's see if we can kind of get you guys in between the tubs and here's a female and they have babies that I've been finding coming to the top and that's what I was pulling aside however um, I don't know how many babies will be in here so my new plan is to get the adults out of here bring them inside as well as some of the native plants that are in here now uh, and then just let the babies kind of hang out out here they can take the weather down to the low 50s um, usually, but again, it's not how they're gonna flourish. And so I'm still debating, do I bring the babies inside, what do I do? Um, but the parents definitely are hunting down the babies faster than they're making them. So I wanna change that. Also over here in the uh, lovely little tub of, watch this, if we disturb the surface, oftentimes we'll get, uh, some fish coming up here in fact there here she comes so these have had eggs several times and one time I put them aside the other time I let them hatch but I don't see any albino fry anywhere um, which is a bit troubling I guess here's the male he always comes to the surface too 
they're looking really healthy still. Um, they're a fish that's found all the way up in, in through the Koreas and northern China, kind of, um, coastal northern China, not like Mongolia, inner China. But they've been doing well, and they have lava rock at the bottom here, so their fry could be hanging out somewhere in there a little bit. And we've got one normal color male in here also, so he could have fertilized some, and we could have some normal fry somewhere in here, but we're really going to have to drain it to find out. Um, and unfortunately, the same is true with these tubs. We've got the golden cloud minnows and meteor minnows in here, white cloud, uh, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and let's see, try to scoop one up in this little catcher's mitt. Well, here's a normal one, flippity floppiting around. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look at her, him, which one, whatever it is, we'll find out in a sec. Um, oh, I dropped it on the ground, of course. So, um, this little guy, come on, jump into my hand. When a fish gets stuck on the ground, you can either pick it up and risk its slime coat, which I will tend to do if it's on a really rough surface like concrete, or you can just let it be. But um, this one, it didn't get too much gravel on it or anything, and we didn't have to do too much um, work. We didn't scrape it or anything, so it should be fine. So we'll we'll put it back in. But it, regardless, they... Uh, they should have some fry in here, I would assume, all summer. And, I mean, it's just thick with uh, with moss and, uh, I mean, there's snails. It looks like, actually, we have um, some bryozoans forming in here, which is really interesting. I did not put them in here, and so the fact that they're forming is just totally natural. Um... They form in our streams here, so there must be spores, or I honestly don't know how they multiply. I don't know how they work and reproduce uh, so much. But then lastly, we have over here more Madaka rice fish also. Um, just like in the other tank where we've got Gambusia, this one we've got least killifish uh, in with the rice fish. And in here we've got the navy blue to kind of dark silver or gray Madakas. Um, the, I started with six. I am curious how many fry we have, but I think, yet again, even with all this moss and everything, we're not really getting the full potential out of these ponds this year, um, which is a bummer. Usually there'd be fry all over and some medium-sized fish, considering they've been out here since June, uh, late May and June. Um, so this year, because my little nursery tanks all got raided uh and either spilled or or uh eaten i'm i'm kind of bummed i mean it's kind of i i don't think i've lost any fish really per se but i've uh as far as what i started with but i don't think i've gained a ton either and that's a bit frustrating but we did grow out some plants and you know the fish do take on just this beautiful color when they're outside i mean you just never are going to recreate the uh the golds and the reds that you get when you get a fish outdoors all summer i mean these colors are just phenomenal uh even the little least killifish which there's probably about 12 of that i started with in here even those uh, and there's probably like 50 in here now um from what I can see, I mean, I catch one or two and they're really small still. They stay really small. They stay half an inch. But um, they should be, I would guess, um, yeah, maybe 50. Because you have to guess that the rice fish probably ate some and their parents probably ate some. But they're a really interesting live bear north, native to North America that I recommend people check out. People don't really seem to know about them when I tell them about these fish. Um, but they are real quick, and so they're kind of hard to catch um, when I'm trying to get them out of here. So I think what I'll have to do is I'll actually have to take a container and just scoop out all the moss like I'm doing here and put this aside. There's going to be fish in the moss, so we'll just have water below it and we'll kind of agitate it or shake it to try to make sure there's no fish in there um, as we do that. Uh, we'll see what we get out of here. The other thing is um, the guppies that are in here, 
um, they should be nice and and uh, colorful with the sunlight that they've gotten and the bugs they've eaten um, but I haven't seen a whole lot of them lately whereas about a month ago I saw literally hundreds of babies and that's not a good sign I do see some more active uh, uh, long fin zebra danios and or leopard danios whatever you want to call them those seem to be doing okay but I think the guppies may have taken a really hard hit unfortunately I'm curious to see who's still surviving but I'm also surprised that it killed some of them in that uh, they these were an outdoor pond Variant. I mean, or they have been anyways. They've been out of friends in a 100-gallon container or 300-gallon container outside. The thing is, at that, that other location, they were buried in the, in the ground, and that really insulates things. So at night, yes, you may get cold temperatures, but everything is going to get better uh, in the day. And so it's kind of an average temperature-wise what you end up with. Um... Let's see here. I'm not being, I'm not doing a good job at catching these with this silly contraption, this kitty litter scooper. But I was trying to get a few of the fish in the frame for you guys, so you could at least see how they've grown. Um, so let's see if we can scare some out into the open over here. Yeah, here we go. So here's some of the longer fin kind. Um, and they definitely, there are some extras, which is good. There's some medium-sized ones, and there's some also some full-sized ones. And they're also, I mean, they're, they're kind of plain colors, honestly, but there are some nice-looking ones um, in the batch, which is good. I mean, that, that makes me nice and happy that some did okay. Uh, but this water is cold. I mean, it's probably 55 degrees. And yes, the guppies can survive that a little bit if they're a robust strain. But they can only take that for a few hours usually. And we're hitting that every night, which is just a total bummer. Um, and uh, yeah, so I need to get them out of here. I need to get all the little fellas out of here that are left. Um, and like I said, I, I'm worried that I'm going to kind of break even on that now the other thing that happened this year that i think really limited the amount of fish that i was able to spawn is um we had a 120 degree day in the sun um it was 114 in the shade but in the sun it was i don't know 120 to 150 depending on where you were and things just baked i mean there's no there was no protecting things uh, i threw ice in and uh, maybe that helped a bit. I, I really don't know. But I'll, just everybody took a beating from that. And so it really shows you how robust some critters are. I mean, that is impressive. Here, see, you see here we have one of the little guppies um, just hanging out. So um, we're gonna, we'll are gonna we have to get all this plant material out of the way, scoop it out. And I'll show you guys what I have at the very end here. Uh, well, in just a moment, actually. Uh, and we'll try to take inventory, move them inside, and, uh, you know, the Madaka can stay out here. They can, uh, we can bring them back out and maybe reshuffle things because we also have a couple containers here with more Madaka. And also we got Gambusia and other things uh, mixed in with them. But, uh, I, yeah, just not the most fruitful year. I'm a little surprised and a little bummed. It was too hot and too cold, which... Sounds weird, but that's what happened. All right, so first off, I wanted to show you guys <clears throat> the uh, the Danios. They do look really beautiful right now. They've really got an olive color to them and a green, and it's totally overcast today. And I'm beginning to see the issue is we've only got two females by the looks of it in here. So that could be part of the problem. You see the ones with the really long fins, like this guy right here, and uh, he's pretty skinny. So uh, I don't know if they also could have gotten a parasite. Haven't checked them all summer for that, um, but that could be. They could have some sort of worm or nematode issue. Um, but these guys here, I mean, they all look like they're they're fully grown now, which is good. They were small when I put them in. They were young, um, and. 
other than this one looking sick, even though it has huge fins, uh, the other ones look pretty good. And check out this little least killifish. I mean, the most beautiful least killifish I've ever seen. Look at that yellow, orange-ish red on its, uh, on its little uh, dorsal fin. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how this killifish got in here. Um, it, it, it could have jumped from one of the little fry hatcheries when there were some fry on the edge. Uh, or it could have been stuck to maybe moss or one of the scoops. Because I wasn't sterile with going from tank to tank by any means uh, it, with these tubs. Um, seeing as they're outside and I only was using one tool with them. But yeah, that, that least killifish, boy, I mean for a native fish... They're so underrated. Uh, where did it go? Um, they're so underrated, and yet they stay so small. They're so hardy, and they actually can have some some nice color on them. Which uh, not a lot of it, but it's just that little hint of color that I think kind of makes it even more special. Um, how did I lose it in this little container? I don't know, but. There we go. There's the Danios. So we'll, we're going to treat everyone before they fully go inside. But, I mean, look at the length of the fins on some of these Danios. Okay, here we go, right here. And we'll have to keep an eye out for ick or any other issues we see as well. But, I mean, look at this little least killifish. I've, I, it's rare to see them with nice color like that in the dorsal fin. So, there you go the U.S. least killy fish. And I'm curious if I have a strain that's just been selected for. Um, you know, I bought it from uh, from Jonah's aqua Aquarium, which is where I get my dip nets to. Um, they sell a lot of native fish. But I'm curious to know if this is just a collection point or if this has been specifically intentionally bred for, for generations. So I'll have to talk to them and find out because if it's not if if it's uh, if it's natural i sure don't see that in the in the pictures and in the uh, information on these fish ever really um and i think that should be known because boy in a little teeny two or three gallon tank you can have these live bears they're the smallest live bears in the world and you can have them in a little tank and you, they can even spawn in a little tank quite happily so pretty cool all right guys so we have the gold ridge uh blue eye these guys are beautiful this male i mean look at that just the beauty in the eye but it was living in literal muck in a few inches of water and so we've moved all the guppies and daniels out of here and we're going to move the rice fish into this bigger pond for the uh, winter slash fall, at least part of the fall. We might move them out before winter fully hits. But this, with all this coverage, covering uh, the water and uh, all that, we'll be able to keep these orange and white belly. We're going to combine the two uh, into this. They'll be able to live in here, no problem. Uh, least killifish, they'll probably stay outside as well. Uh, all year and uh, then in here we just took out that's where we got most of the orange ones from so we took out everything but the stones and now we're waiting for it to clear but what I wanted to show you is that literally three months of summer and we have mulm that is I mean it smells earthy it doesn't smell stinky like for a while it smells kind of like decay or rotten uh, like compost now it smells earthy. It smells very organic. Uh, so that's a good sign. But this was a filterless uh, tank. Nothing uh, agitating the water or anything. That doesn't work with every species. But with some of the carps and killifish and cyprinids and things, it works out pretty well. As well as live bears uh, or garamis, any labyrinth fish. And then in here, we've got some gambusia which are the mosquito fish or millions fish uh, which are very 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 similar to a guppy you can see that looks like a female guppy right there uh, but being outside they've got this kind of cool black mark 
or navy blue really uh, mark down their side down their lateral line the males do here um, which is kind of interesting and their 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 uh, dorsal fin is set back a little farther than most guppies I mean there's so many types of guppies now that that's kind of a hard statement to make but we're gonna get them out of there and then let me show you we're getting a jar of some of the baby fry out of the other tank on the side and then that jar will go inside um, and then any more eggs that they lay will be outside and we'll we'll see how how it stacks up survival rate wise all right here we are back at the tank where we started and this tank here something interesting happened that I've seen in in lakes before but I've never seen it in a tank and also let's get a shot up against the house here try to show you guys how small some of these little fry are right here beautiful little little uh madoc and they're these little rice fish are all uh maybe two or three weeks old at this size they start a little more clear and uh come out pretty well adapted to to cruise around and eat little micro foods on their own and just in this jar alone you can see there's little things moving around algae and plankton and snails and uh who knows just all sorts of little copepods and isopods all that stuff and they'll eat that they'll eat that freshwater plankton uh, but the interesting thing here so we're going through and we're picking out the adults and we're also spotting new babies the little babies are all really teeny so I think the adults this in this tank they didn't let the babies survive for some reason I don't know if that was because I didn't feed them enough or something about the tank didn't support the babies with enough protein but here we're catching the last of the medium age ones which these I grew up indoors for uh, for maybe three months and then I brought them out here about a month ago but they're still really beautiful and they're just getting older and getting mature um, so I'm gonna go put any of these that I catch with the other with the other crowd of them uh, but the really weird part about this tank is that when I started pulling up on the bottom uh, where I snagged some algae this stuff here literally the entire bottom we saw mulm on the other tank this is another filterless tank but we had a perfect um, the entire bottom had a perfect cap like a blank it had a perfect cap of algae and detritus and mulm uh, at the bottom. So only the baby fish and maybe, you know, planaria and little nematodes and whatever. Little microscopic life was getting under there. This side of the tank was taken up by roots more. and But underneath all this, the algae wasn't at the top of the tank like you'd see with with a lot of aquariums indoors this is like like i said it's an entire just sheet of algae uh that was the entire bottom of the tank was made of this so we went ahead and i pulled it up it's probably rich in nutrients but i just looked at it and i'm kind of curious to maybe chop some up put it in a jar see how it saves for over the winter in a jar or something just because I'm kind of curious what all is in it. Uh, but in any case, we're going to get these guys uh, taken care of. Get them over into the pond with the others. And that will kind of wrap up things for now. Um, with the, the species that really we need to get uh, taken care of from the cold the most. So if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff. If you want to learn more about these species and all species really in the hobby put together uh, please by all means check out the other videos on the channel and uh, subscribe if you enjoy it uh, to the secret history living in your aquarium thanks guys and uh, I just want to be honest and share how everything went this year not amazing not a complete failure just kind of stagnant so um, I'd love to hear about your your tubs, but there you go. You can see they're all congregating and doing well. 
um, and in this water they should be pretty dang happy so off you go little guy there'll probably be a couple strays that I'll have to catch and uh, when the water clears up over here there might be some fry that I need to catch and stuff but we'll see we'll see how it goes in the meantime um, the mosquitoes have died down this time of year uh, but the um, food obviously is still needed by these guys so I'm giving them a little bit of flake food but other than that uh, there might be one more update of tubbing this summer but uh, we're kind of coming in on the home stretch I'll probably do a, a live stream where we talk about how everything went and uh, the total count on you know which fish we raised the population of which one stayed the same and if any lowered so all right guys take care i'll talk to you later bye all right guys so we got some of the rosy barbs out of the tank that was back there they're not colorful or anything yet but they do have a couple dots on their tails and they do have their full finnage uh like the adults do by about a month old these ones are probably maybe a month two months old and uh, the parents definitely were chewing on these guys. But here you can actually make out the whole organ system and everything in this fish. Kind of crazy. And those two black dots on the uh, caudal peduncle back by the tail. You can kind of see some of the orange even in that one. Uh, so, kind of cool. And in the fin you can kind of see a little bit of color too. When the light hits it just right. But we've got this size... And we've also got the extremely teeny little guys that, let's see if we can even find them. This is literally a little saucer, and it's still hard to find all the fish I put in here. There we go. So, this is probably within a week and a half old, but pretty similar to tetras or anything else size-wise. I mean, we're talking very small and then over here we've got the uh, we've got the midaka rice fish the uh, platinum pearl ones and then there's one orange one and they're growing out doing well I think I'm gonna put both these groups inside and start feeding them baby brine shrimp on the daily uh, maybe twice a day and I'll just be watching the ponds I'll move the adults from the ponds where they were on their own spawning to a community pond where I'm not going to worry about it and anybody who can stay outside will stay outside in the ponds and uh, tanks and then the babies uh, in the form of eggs or the little fish that I can't collect because boy is it hard to sort through a very densely planted tank to get all of these guys but the ones that are left uh, should hatch and survive the next month or two it's not going to be too extreme i wouldn't think weather wise it will get down to probably 45 or 50 but for the most part i've got species that can handle that like least killifish or uh, madaka rice fish um, so we're going to do that and then anytime i see them i'll probably grab them and take them inside if i happen to see other fry so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, I'd love it if you hit the thumbs up button, and also checked out the channel for more specific species pro profiles, uh, species spotlights as it were, and uh, other videos on the history of the hobby and luminaries and great minds involved with uh, turning the hobby in to what it is today. So, thanks for watching guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye!